welcome back everybody to the insurance panel today with this it's no no guess it's just nick and i which is um uh, almost rare at this point yeah it's been a while since we've done one without a guest that's crazy and uh even more so but this is this is not rare we we don't really know what we're going to talk about um you never know what we're going to talk about it's you know we were, we were supposed to do on friday uh but friday had uh, some complications. Nick had something to do, and I was like, "Well, it's no problem. We'll just do it Saturday morning." But then we never like was like, "Hey, what are we talking about this week, anyways?" Um, so I'm just hey, we'd be more prepared. Yeah, typically I have my hair all done and stuff like that, but it's Saturday. Uh, I'm going hiking, uh, so that's why I have all this on. But speaking of hiking, in a world where most companies are hiking the rates, there's some companies that are actually lowering the rates. <laughs> And it's a great thing, Nick. Oh, yeah. Can you see how I did that? No, I like that. I like that. No, that's good. That's good. Um, someone said, I thought Matt was just a great head of hair, but he's actually a master of segues. So I appreciate that. I think it was David, maybe. Might have been. Uh, I know David's a fan of the show. Hey, David. Um, but you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, a company, I don't, we don't like to name names, but a company, um, who has we have this conversation without talking about the company I think we have to. Um, we're talking about facts about a specific about what's happening with a specific company. Can we say it? Yeah. I think it's okay. Okay. Transamerica. Yeah. Um, who was traditionally one of the I mean, just I mean, they, they crush it as an insurance company. They absolutely dominate in most facets. And they were killers in the filing expense market. And then they recently made some changes a year or so ago. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they saw a downward trend in their filing expense business. Um, and to counteract that, I'm sure they got together and made some, some strong business decisions to revamp a lot of things. And one of those things was to decrease the rates and they compared it against some other companies and they actually sit pretty well. So I'm, I'm proud of your mic's a little. Yeah, the new rates are strong. Yeah, the new rates, you're. I, I don't know if it's just me or, but I really can't hear you. Really? Yeah. It's like, you're like super distant and it might be my ears. I don't know. Well, I suppose we'll find out when it gets recorded. If we have to just ditch this whole thing. Maybe, but I can, I can hear you. It's just not super loud, but I'm super proud of them. Uh, a lot of carriers right now are increasing the rates as they're going to be. And if you don't know that it's going to happen. But really, it doesn't matter if if everybody increases their rates. It's like the same thing, just a little bit higher. You still have to sell insurance. It doesn't matter what the rate is. You just have to be able to sell the insurance, right? But I think uh, Transamerica is doing a lot of great things. Um, I know they changed some of their commissions rates or another commission percentages. Yeah, Say again. It's pretty bad. Uh, so if you kind of caught up to us, uh, Nick has has got to get a new computer. He makes a ton of money, but won't invest in another five hundred dollar laptop. So it's everybody, a practically brand new Nick computer. I'm just I'm frustrated that this one doesn't work. It's four years old, Nick. That's, it's not brand new. It's only four years old. It's not that old. Okay, okay. fine. Go get you a new I'm, one. I'm, uh, I'm, comu- yeah, I'm computer shopping. Be- I am actively computer shopping. I it'll be. I did. Um, I went to uh, Missouri to hang out with uh, Cody Askins, Landon, and all them, and they had oh, these yeah, like, sure. really sick, like boom mic type things. Yeah. But I was like, I gotta get one. They were like totally worth it, and they sounded incredible. So, I'm sorry, Nick. I don't like to spend money, but we're gonna spend money on those things. No, I don't have a problem. It's with a tax writer. <clears throat> yeah. No. I and and we're you know. Once I finish getting the construction on my office done and I stop having to bounce around where I am physically to like yeah. have a background that's not a halfway, halfway deconstructed office, um, it will, it, we will, I will have a little bit more of a permanent place to set up things like lighting arrays and, and, and microphones and things. We actually know We're what microphones out. we want to get and stuff. But. Yeah, we do. We have our, we've already done the research. We just hadn't pulled the trigger. Um, no. um a lot of times it just takes me just actually buying it and shipping it to Nick. And then he just pays me later because <laughs> Nick will ever actually get to it. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, let's go back. Let's go back to Transamerica. 
like I said, in a world where most carriers are almost running away from final expense, mm-hmm. it seems like they're running back toward it, which is good. <clears throat> which is good and surprising. Um I I don't know. I expect that a lot of this has to do with the new uh, with the new uh, actuarial tables that are being forced to be used by the end of the year. <clears throat> I am I would not be surprised if we didn't see a lot more fluctuation in prices from various companies before the year is out. Um, don't know if they're going to go up. Don't know if they're going to go down. I, I was un- I was under the impression that they were going to go up more than they were going to go down. Um, yeah, but. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that they, I mean, it, it's, a, it's an opportunity for the actuaries to take a new look at the market and, and decide what reality looks like. Um, and I, I'm, we're going to see companies changing their underwriting also, you know, um, we're just going to see like, it's going to be, I will be shocked if it is not a year of tremendous change if by if by the end of December, um, the landscape of carriers doesn't look very different. Um, some of the newer carriers that are kind of making a splash recently probably won't change all that much because they've they've most likely had that all built in from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the a lot of the carriers that have been around for a long time and haven't been making any changes, I don't see how they can't um, yeah. either either changing their underwriting or changing their pricing or changing their commission structure. Or, I mean, that's how Transamerica is getting away with doing the, uh, lowering the prices is they're changing their commission structure. How um, are they changing it for those that might be watching it? They're reducing renewals by, by a fair bit. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like a lot. Um, which, but let's, let's, yeah. let's talk about like, this. Let's talk about it. Like statistically, a final expense policy pays on the books, stays on the books for like seven years. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Traditionally. So where renewals are super important, I don't see it much that bad of a thing. If I can get a good upfront commission, a little bit lower of renewals just to keep the prices where I kind of want them to be. I don't know. I, I would rather I would rather actually take an upfront commission cut and take a longer and take a better renewal. Like personally, I would rather write a company that pays a hundred percent comp and fifteen percent renewals over a company that pays a hundred and thirty percent comp and two percent renewals. You could be like Everett and get like thirty percent right. comp and like thirty percent renewals or I think I can't remember exactly what it was. If you have not watched I, I don't that. remember what is I, I don't know what his upfront is. I think his upfront's probably closer to sixty, but yeah, and, yeah. But it's but still but, but still, like you know, Everett's getting um, Everett's getting almost fifty percent renewals. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, you know, you're talking fifty percent of you know uh, sixty dollars a month. You know, you're every policy you got on the books, you get thirty bucks for every single policy that you got on the books every month. I mean, that's Medicare. Like, that's the that's the type of money that Medicare agents talk about, yeah. right? And Medicare Advantage plans don't stay on the books any longer than final expense plans. Really? And people, yeah, that. no, no, because people, it's, it's the same problem. People die, right? Um, yeah. People um, die and it's such, so what I've learned about Medicare and I have to be careful, I don't have my, my health license, so that, but here's what I know. It's a $0 premium, right? They can't say, yep. can't say free. It's awesome, $0 premium. But, yeah, yeah, it's, it's $0 from this one to this one. It's just Hey, Miss Jones, it's the same premium that you're paying, which is happens to be zero. However, I'm going to get you this one small benefit this year. And Miss Jones yeah. goes, that's incredible. It's the yeah. best thing I've ever heard. And they switch. Mm-hmm. There's so much more. When I first got into, when we first got into the Medicare game, I thought it was just, you just sign them up and then you never see them again. And you just have all these renewals, but it's not that. No, it is not that. Right? No, it's it's absolutely not that. Yeah. So um, recruiters are selling the dream. This is a, a big problem in our industry. Recruiters are selling the dream on Medicare only sales, mm-hmm. and they say once you get four hundred clients on the books, you have a hundred thousand dollars, which is true. True. Right? Absolutely true. 
but it does not mean you could just go away and make a hundred thousand dollars for the rest of your life yeah. without ever having work again. There are so few Medicare agents that have 400 clients on the books. Um, like so few cl- Medicare agents who have 400 clients on the books. Um, there are even fewer who have like 800 clients on the books, like super, super rare to have a book of 800 people because realistically, once you get to like 300, 350 clients, if you don't start like spending all of your time servicing your book of business, you're going to lose them and the book starts to fall apart. Um, And you either need to start hiring staff or you need to put a lot of time into it. Um, You know, I have a friend of mine whose father is a captive agent for one of the larger Medicare companies um, and has been since the early 90s. Mm. And he's got a book of business of 800 clients that he's built since like 1990. Um, And he's captive, so he doesn't get the same commission as you would get if you were non-captive. Um, it's, it's like, he makes like 60% of what a non-captive agent makes, but it's still, he's making, he's making almost, he's making almost $200,000 a year on his renewals. And literally all he does is just try to talk to two or three of his current clients every day. And that's, that's all he does. He doesn't do anything else. He doesn't look for new business. He cross sells a few things. Um, when the opportunity arises, if he loses somebody, he tries to replace that lost person so that his book stays at the same level that it is. But he has, he is not attempting to grow his book. He's only attempting to replace what falls off and collect referrals and do the occasional cross sell and mostly work his, and mostly collect his renewals. But he works a lot every day. He works every day, all day long, like just, just keeping that book happy. Like, literally you know going and visiting and sitting with three or four of his existing clients every day and most he's got 800 would, of them and most people right. would for two hundred thousand dollars a year absolutely right you know if that's that's the dream right that's why he doesn't want to stop being captive like his son who is an independent insurance agent which is how i know this guy um his son is like dad you could be making twice as much money if you went independent and his dad's like yeah but it took me you know 20 years to build a book of 800 people uh, i'm pretty good man i'm like getting ready to retire <laughs> i'm like this is it yeah you know yeah, yeah it's uh, it's just i've seen a lot of medicare shops open up recently in the last yeah. couple of years no, okay bad. and they're selling the dream of medicare only sales and that you're just going to just ki- just absolutely monster kill it. And you're going to have 400 people in the books, 600 people in the books, 800 people in the books in a few years, mm-hmm. which is possible. But it's unlikely. But it's unlikely. It is possible the way that writing $250,000 a year of final expense every year is possible. Very possible. Everybody yeah. who's watching this show can do it. Like almost none of them will. Yeah, I just right. I guess what I'm trying to <laughs> like, say. Yeah, it's a hard work. It's hard. It's it's a lot of hard work. You have to try. Right. It's definitely doable, and it's but it's not like it's easy, and it's but, not you know. But if you're an average final expense agent, and let's just call average. Realistically, Nick, uh, average should be a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. Yeah, sure. Producing that sounds right. Yeah, that's not right. You're going to make fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars per year, depending on what you're going to pay After out for lead costs. Blah blah and, blah. blah. Yeah, 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 right. right. It's traditional. If you suck and you just go, that's about what you make. But if you learn how to sell cross sale, like one a week, mm-hmm. over the course of like. 5, 10, 15 years, you will have built up a book yeah. of 200, 300, maybe 400 clients. Easy. And over that time, if you just keep being an average agent, which you should get better, but let's just keep you're still an average agent. Over time, your renewals will become more than what you're making in your final expense. You don't ever stop, but that's how you get to that $150,000, $200,000 mark. You just have to be consistent 
most people in this business aren't consistent. But to bring this back around to where we started, yeah, you know, final expense used to pay once upon a time, many years ago, way before I started doing this. But, you know, final expense used to pay like Medicare level renewals, you know, paid a lot less up front, you know, but you used to be able to get, you know, 20% renewals on a final expense policy. Yeah. Um, I mean, heck, um, a surety, which doesn't sell final expense anymore, but um, up until like the year before they left the business or maybe two years before they left the business, they were still offering like 20, 22, 25% renewals, depending on your contract level. Like you could still get, and at, at like 110% upfront first year commission too. Wow. Like I'm not like, yeah, like, I mean, the product was really hard to use. And so they <clears throat> attempted to get more people to use it by jacking up their upfront commission to like 130 street level and dropping renewals to like 5%. Um, and then that didn't work. And then they pulled the product entirely. But, um, but it wasn't like that long ago. Like, I mean, you remember when Assurity left the business, like, yeah. like it wasn't, it wasn't like outside of recent memory. You know, it was like four years ago. You know who has some really good renewals that still to this day, hmm? family benefit. Yeah, absolutely. And GPM. GPM. What's GPM pay on renewals for street? I, will tell I know you. Liberty Bankers also um, has a really good renewal structure. They do something interesting where they bonus your renewals if your persistency is good, which is sort of unique and weird. Got it. Let me... I can talk more about Liberty Bankers and Family Bankers yeah. while you, to stall for yeah, time yeah. while you look this up. Yeah, years on a 115 mm -hmm. street. First year 115, years 2, 13. Hey. Years 3 through 5, 9. That's very solid. 6 through 10, 5. And then 1, 5 forever. And the 1, 5 forever is pretty nice. Pretty like big. A lot of companies are going to after just, year just 11, 10. you're done. Yeah. yeah. You know, like a lot of companies are switching to that model. Um, like it used, I, remember, I remember talking to um, Steve Bontel, who you know. Um, I remember talking to him about Settler's life before Settler's went away and how he was so proud that Settler's was the company where if you could keep somebody on the books for 10 years at street level commission, you would make more money with Settler's life than you would make with any other company in the industry because of the way they structured their renewals mm -hmm. um, and because they paid renewals for life. Um, and, you know, you were making, I think, I think 1.5 for life. Um, but then, you know, you were making something like five or six percent all the way up until year 10. Um, but, um, that's your soul. Yeah. I, I think renewal, I still think renewals are important. Um, I think that renewals for new agents, renewals get sold is not important because managers want new agents to be seeing cash flow quickly. Yes. Because they know that that's going to keep a new agent from failing. Good, good managers like want this, right? Like good managers want new agents to be seeing cash flow quickly. Bad managers want to start you at sixty percent. Forget that. But like, but like um, your management, even if they're good, especially if they're good, they want you to be selling stuff that pays on issue instead of on you know instead of on first draft, and they want you to be selling stuff that has an instant decision because you know before you go and they want you to sell stuff that pays really high upfront commission and forget about renewals because who knows if you're really even going to be in the business in two years make the money now while you got it yep. right and it, and if from a management perspective that makes all the sense in the world to me as an agent if this is you watching me and you are not managing somebody else and telling them what to do and you plan to be in this business long term take the renewal money I make a lot of money off my final expense renewals, like a, like a lot of money off my final expense renewals. I make more money off my final expense renewals than I made as a teacher when I was teaching full-time. Two jobs. <laughs> Two teaching jobs full-time. Um, so I had this conversation the other day. Um, Aetna yeah. 
CVS. Not really sure what they're calling it. Now, but let's just which which version of Aetna? <laughs> which version <laughs> yeah. of Aetna are we talking? Not about? not the old Aetna. Not the old uh, Aetna. Okay. Not the you just send it in and we'll approve it deal. Right. Um, the new the new final expense product they have. They some of their products pay on draft, mm-hmm. which a lot of agents are like, well, I'm not going to write it because I don't get paid on issue. Mm-hmm. But they have seen a 22 percent increase in non NSF or persistency yep. from draft, just paying on draft alone. Yeah. How many agents, Nick, do you think would be completely gone from this business if we all got paid on draft? Unfortunately, a lot. I prefer to be paid on draft. I, I actually like being paid on issue is annoying to me. It's like but a paid. It, it's like a payday loan. I it don't feels like yeah. It messes up my bookkeeping. Yes. Like right. It makes it harder for. It makes it makes me have to take extra steps to know who's drafted and who's not drafted because I have to now go. I can't just check my bank account. I have to now like I get my check and then I still have to babysit this policy, right? Yeah. Like I don't like that. Yeah. Like you know. When I worked for my the first insurance company I worked for when I was captive, mm-hmm. they paid on draft. Mm-hmm. And the only way that you got paid, you know, they, they preached about getting paid every day. Well, the only way you get actually paid every day is if you collect a check right. that was live. What that did for me was got me really good at collecting checks mm-hmm. yeah. and collecting checks that were good for that day. Right. Like not post dated checks and stuff, right? Yeah, not post dated checks. No, you know, but, but it was also nice because I would still get a lot of the, I don't have my money till the third, et cetera, right? So I would make enough money to survive, but on the third or the fifth or whatever it was, mm-hmm. it was a nice yeah, you payday a every, every time. And if you're an agent and most of your bills, like most people fall around the first through the fifth of the month, yep. you can pay all of your bills right then and there and chill the rest of the month but again that's a most agents and most managers and most agencies don't want to do that no but the true veteran i'm not even a true veteran the veteran final expense agents if they could they probably would go to paid on draft only and you would see this i I believe this you would see a lot of the bad agents completely leave Mm -hmm. it would be nothing but really good agents selling what filing expense is supposed to be and not a cash grab. Yeah. Listen, I have, um, <clears throat> so one of the companies I write a lot um, puts an automatic advance cap on mm. you. They will only advance you up to a certain amount of dollars every month. Oh, okay. Um, per month. Okay. Per like, month. Yeah. So like they'll, they'll get like, I think if you're brand new, when, when you start with them and you are brand new until you've, until you've placed 10 policies with them, you only get paid as earned. And then after you've placed 10 policies with them, um, they'll, they will advance you up to $3,000 a month. Um, and then after you've been with them for like a couple of months, you can ask to have that advance cap raised or depending on who you are, even eliminated. And most of the agents that I know that write this company don't have that advance cap anymore. They, they just ask to have it gotten rid of. Um, and, and I just never did. Like it just never mattered to me. So I write a ton with this company. Um, I'm basically as earned with this particular company. Ah, uh, yeah, as... because like on the first of the month you get paid like three grand and then you right. just like it just you're and gonna be getting everything paid three else grand is just... from yeah, you're gonna be getting right. paid three grand from policies that you wrote a right. year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like and so it's just like it's just like I and it it's not I mean it's not bad. Like I have the cash flow to be able to afford to do that sort of thing. And not everybody does, but it's, I mean, there are some nice things about like being able to say, I know every month I'm going to be making this much money and getting a steady paycheck coming in. Um, just because, you know, it, it's, I don't know, living off of advances um, is weird, you know, and it's, 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 it's a little stressful. It's yes. It's very stressful, which is, why the term commission breath is a thing yeah 
I can see it on every new agent or an agent that's struggling when they're in a house and they're sitting down with Miss Jones and she's 78. So the premium is going to be a little bit higher and he's quoting her for a $10,000 policy. It's going to be $110 a month, whatever it's going to be. Sure. You can see him pushing so hard mm-hmm. or her so hard for that business <clears throat> because it's the 28th, not only for, for him, but for her. Mm-hmm. So he wants to get that draft. He wants to get that check. He's going to push for that business <clears throat> to get a payday loan just to pay his bill. Right. She's going to cancel. He's going to get a charge back. And then it starts the whole roll up debt thing that you should go watch. But it's just like, I don't know. I've thought too much about this. Like how do we, the only way that that whole draft thing works is if every carrier said, we're right. not paying yet, you know, but it's not. Right. That's a, I don't yeah. think that's going to happen for a very long time unless the conglomerate got together and like, it just yeah. won't work. Anyways. I mean, honestly, I would prefer if I only got paid after the first payment clears, like, yeah. like, like I, I, like I would much prefer, like, I don't want to get paid until I know that they're not going to NSF their first payment. Pay me on the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And like that, but that's the type of thing that agents would like throw fits over. Right. Like, you're going to make me wait five days to know whether the check is even cleared. So, like, not only am I not getting paid on draft, I'm getting paid, like, five days after the draft. Like, I, I would prefer that. But, but then I, there's you the, know, you know, then there's the whole but, devil's advocate of, like, if you're a new agent, you need advances you to need, keep paying for more leads. You do. You know, so. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and, I, and you need the cash flow. And I get it. I really do. It would be nice if you had the choice. I will say that's another thing that Liberty Bankers does that is nice. I'm I'm not like trying to be all like rah rah Liberty Bankers, but um, talking to Everett last week um, got me thinking about like some of the other companies that I don't think about all that often. And like you can choose if you get advanced or not with Liberty Bankers. Mm-hmm. You can be like, yeah, this guy I think is a bad risk. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to only take I'm only going to take his earned. I'm not positive he's going to pay more than a couple months. Oh, um, on each policy and each policy. Yeah. You can choose on a policy per policy basis with Liberty Bankers. That has got to be an accounting nightmare for them. I don't, I don't know how they do that. It's crazy. Um, and if too many people start start utilizing it too much, it will probably not be something they continue to allow you to do. Dude, but, their commissions yeah. department has got to be wow. So they the the way that they have it set up, at least the way my contract is set up, is I I technically have two writing numbers. It's the same writing number with an A at the end or uh, with an S at the end. Got it. <clears throat> Got it. Um, and if you if you submit it with the writing number that has the A at the end, it's advanced. You're advanced. And if you submit it with the writing number that has the S at the end, it's uh, it's as earned. I don't know why S. Supplemental? I don't know. I'm trying to think of an S, but uh, yeah, okay. That that makes more sense. I just thought it was like you have one writing number and they have to keep up with each policy. And I was like, right, someone has lost their mind or someone. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, um, that's crazy. I know. I I'm actually happy that we're talking about insurance companies. We're not scared. We're only talking positive things, right? We're Uh, we're only talking in factual things. We're not talking about opinions. We're talking about things that are. Yeah, things that are that are truthful. Yeah, um, public, so it, public knowledge stuff. Yeah, that you can go on online and anywhere and talk about. But I'm glad because we don't get to do that often. Um, yeah. And really, to me, like you said, it's not often that it's just me and you just talking. So I got a really good, I had a really good conversation with an agent of yours on the Medicare. Wait, I think, yeah. she's, I think she's final expense. Yeah, but I don't have it final expense downline. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But she works with right. FX. Yes, um, she does. And she called me, and I didn't, I didn't. I don't know how she got my number. How you got my number, sweetheart, is beyond me. Um, but she called me, and she was like, "I love the insurance panel." And she goes, <laughs> "She said it is like you and Nick are sitting at a bar, talking about what you love, and every once in a while, somebody else that just got done from work walked in and started chatting with you guys." Ah, that's the idea. I'm glad and she which gets is, it. Which is exactly what we wanted to do. So. That's a uh, that's some true feedback from from somebody. So I mean the that's awesome. Yeah, no, and she was a she was an ad, she, the reason she reached out to me just so you know, Dick, is uh, because I worked for the same first company that she worked with. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first right. company was her first company. Sure. So she had this uh, 
<clears throat> thought process that she was going through. And she's like, how did you break out of that? Cause she watched our video on work-life balance. Oh yeah, sure. That's a good it's, video. Uh, we should, we should like put a little tag to that up here somewhere. Ryan, somewhere in there. You should definitely watch all of our videos. Um, specifically, I think our last couple of videos have been really good. Yeah, Everett was awesome. And I love the title of that video. Uh, the la- I, I made him seem like a Lone Ranger. He's not the only person left. Like, I promise you guys. It yeah. just was, it was a good one. Um, yeah, it was one a good one. Dusty. Uh, yeah, it was fire. Went, was really good. Uh, and Dusty, I love Dusty. I was talking about it yesterday. He goes, man, y'all are really slacking on uploading videos. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, we got one up every week for like the past like month and a half. He goes, I have not seen it. And he just logged out of his own YouTube channel. <laughs> so he hadn't, he hadn't gotten anything. And he goes, oh, it's right there. It's, you know, I was like, Tusty, I swear I was going to whoop your ass, dude, if you don't. So um, this is a good opportunity to also remind everybody, if you don't hit the little bell icon when you subscribe, you might not get told that we have new videos. Because we get people telling us all the time that we don't have new videos. We like, do. That we're not up- we, we've been putting one up a week, like since the beginning of the year. It's been one a week since the start of the And year. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to commit to it now. I leave for Romania June 7th, and I'll be gone until like July 7th. So a whole month, I'll be gone. But I'm going to do everything in my power to record from Romania. Wow. Uh, okay. which is going to be, which is going to be sick. Um, they that have better is. internet. It's going to, they have better internet, like superior, but do they really? That's great. Yeah. Oh, like America is like, and here's the reason why this is, this is be so many other countries have had bigger wars where they had to relay stuff. We still right. use the old coaxial cable and nothing right. ever got like bombed in America. Right. So we still late. We have the same stuff that we never dug up and redid. Right. Where everywhere else had to relay it. That's and crazy. so they have better stuff, uh, all fiber optic and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So crazy. there's better internet, but I, I even during that time, uh, we're still going to be uploading. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you have the bell on, and make sure you comment. We've gotten a lot of comments recently, and the other thing is, make sure you go to the insurance panel at gmail.com and send us some send us a message. Like tell us if you don't want to sit in the comments, you have questions. Like we will answer them. If you want it private, we'll just email them private. Um, if yeah. you want us to bring it up, want to bring it up. We were checking them today and there was none in there. So we were a little sad, but we're almost yeah. at 1300 subscribers, which is awesome. Crazy. But you know, this channel is going to anyway. continue to grow. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> I got you distracted. You were talking about, um, about, uh, the work-life balance video and what, what the agent was talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was, I don't want to tell too much about what she had going on, but she worked at the same place. So they trained her mind that you could only work and no, no off. Like there was no off right switch. Yeah. And so she related with me on that video and she was like, how did you manage to wean yourself off? And to be honest, it was a good question. I was a little stumped because I, it, t- it just took me a while because when I first got back from that company, I still had the, only work thing Mm -hmm. and i think the advice i told her was like find a hobby yeah which is what we did in the video yeah uh which is like hey make yourself the goal and if you if you if your monthly income goal is x and you're doing that in x amount of time then stop working and go do the things that you want to really do yeah. Well, I, I just told somebody that on Facebook the other day and I don't know. I don't know. The guy didn't res- like respond to the post or anything. So who knows? But, um, you know, somebody posted one of those like for new agents. How do you keep yourself motivated to go out and sell? Um, was that a Facebook my, post? It was. A, yeah. I, it's one of many Facebook posts. But yeah, it was yeah. a Facebook post. Um, it's a common. It's a frequent Facebook post. I, I see that a lot. Um, and um, my response has always been like. I have never needed motivation to like pay my mortgage and feed my family. Like that's all I've like, that's all the motivation I've ever needed. But in fairness, I'm not entirely sure that that's actually the question. You know, the question is like, I think actually, how do you keep yourself from, from being so overwhelmed, scared, uh, you know, like, inundated with possibilities to actually get out the front door and go sell and see people no i and maybe i'm wrong but maybe i think the question is how do you go from 
you know, just making enough to wanting an abundance. Because is- like to keep them motivated, like the first, the motivation should be pay your mortgage, right? But if they make enough just to pay the mortgage, which is like just enough, which mm-hmm. is what you do on a job. Um, how do you get to where you want to have X amount of dollars in the bank? How do you get to that, that point? Maybe. I think the answer would be the same either way. Yeah. Like I, I, I think that for me, at least, I think the answer is, you know, you've got to at some point stop focusing on the money and start focusing on, you know, routines and systems and things that you just do every day because they're the things you do every day. Um, and they're going to be different for everybody. For me, it is, you know, finding a way to give 12 presentations a week. That doesn't necessarily resonate with every person. I'm not going to say that it does. But uh, for me, giving 12 presentations a week, no matter what amount of money I make. And then um, if I give 12 presentations a week, the week is a win. And I treat it like a win. And I celebrate. And we do something nice. Um, And if I don't give 12 presentations a week, I lost. You know? And... You know, we don't go out, I, you know, I don't go out to dinner or I don't buy myself a watch or whatever the fuck I was going to do. Um, Your daughter still gets ice cream. My, well, my daughter gets ice cream regardless. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, like, sure. That, that, like, that, that, <laughs> the kid, the kid, the kid probably eats ice cream every day. She should be. Uh, we, indulgent parents but um but but like you, you know it's like it's 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 me stuff though like you know um but whatever that is for you you know if it is a, if it's a dollar amount for you that's fine i don't know that that's healthy um i don't know that you can totally control the dollar amount but if whatever but if that's what it is if it's what it is but having some sort of system in place if it's i'm going to call this many people every day or i'm going to sit in front of this many people every day or i'm going to knock on this many doors every day or whatever it's going to be something that is 100% in your control um and and make it the smallest unit that you can and just stay do that you know and and turn it into a job there's nothing wrong with it being a job there's nothing wrong with it necessarily being routine i think routine will help a lot of the time yeah it'll help you realize that if you just do your routine you're going to make the money that you need to make right but for me for me it was a dollar amount and i'll explain why sure when i worked at my job I knew exactly how much money I was going to get paid. Right. Sure. And most people do this when they're on a job, they go, okay, I got paid this day and they're already counting when they're going to get paid next. And mm-hmm. so they pay like the bills that they know they need to pay before that date. Then they go blow it all. And then the last like week they have like a hundred dollars in their account and they like right. space it out. And it's like, boom, you know, an influx of like 1400 bucks. Right. And then they make it work, blah, blah, blah. And there's just like this hamster wheel. So for me, and the way I grew up, because I grew up without money, mm-hmm. if I had $500 in my account after bills were paid, I was bawling like LeBron. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it was like yeah. I had money to do stuff. And the, it, to, for me, doing stuff was I had money to go to the movies and get a large bucket of popcorn. Right. You know what I mean? Like that was the, yeah. the baller mentality. So when I got into insurance, even though I made money quicker, I would stop when my bills were paid and I had, if I had a thousand dollars account, I'm like, Dude. but when it got to be below like the level of like 250, that's when I went to freak out mode and I went to go sell more. And then I would go to this abundance thing. I would make enough. I'd ball out until it gets below 250. What I did is I started raising my minimum to 500. So once I got to 500, I was like, my account will never go below that number again. Yeah. Then it went to 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. And then once it got to be like, basically like 25,000 is when I was like, I started learning about like, you really shouldn't have any more than $20,000 in your checking account. You should start like, you know, so then it was for me, it was like, I want to start putting money into investing Mm-hmm. blah 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 and grow those accounts to be that number but f- like i just kept raising the minimum over and over and over and got so far away from what i used to think was a lot of money 
you got to change the way that you think. Yeah. Yeah. But. No. And, and, and whatever, like, and if that's what works for you, like, great. Right. Like, because you found something that works for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but you gotta, works. you gotta find whatever that thing is. Right. The thing that res the thing that makes that clicks. Yeah. Like, so right? my, for me now, like my zero is if my checking account balance goes below like $20,000, I go into major freak out mode that there's going to be apocalypse. Like all of my bills are paid for a long time, (laughs) but I have this, this undying fear that that's my last $20,000 and I'll never make another dollar again, even though I will, it just, it's in my mind. I'm like, Oh crap. And that's what keeps me going. So yeah, it's different for everybody. Um, Right. But but you got to find the you got to find the thing and and that's the the tough thing about psychology is like you have to find the thing that works for you and just because something works for me or something works for matt doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to work for you right you know and it's but you got to find whatever that thing is what works for you Um, guys put it down in the comments yeah how do you keep yourself like focused i'm I'm not even going to say motivated but like focused um yeah you know, I know for me, the presentation thing helps. Like I went, there was a strength because I don't know when I'm going to get pe- bad prospects or when I'm going to get no's. Right. Like, and right. I don't really have any control over, like if I get a run of prospects that are just bad prospects, um, you know, it, I went this week, I went like, oh, for six in a row, like straight in a row, like, no, 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 no. Like, yeah. Right. And some of that was me. Like there's definitely one or two in there that I missed that probably should have closed that like my head wasn't there. Um, but I still wrote six grand this week. Right. Right. Like, because I went over six and then I closed the other seven. Right. Then you went right. seven for seven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually, it was like, it was like four for four and three for three, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, right. Like I went, I sold, I sold four in a row, went over six, then sold another three. Um, because that's the amount of appointments that I had. Um, and it's fine week. It was a fine week, but, but if it wasn't for like my focus, if I was just focusing on like every individual sale, Correct. going six in a row is disheartening. Yeah, so if you sold three and you're like at the high and then you went 0 for 6, you only hit nine. But most people would go, I am the worst salesman of all time. Right. And you went, I just haven't seen. I need to see other another I need five to see, people. I've got, yeah, I've got another four appointments on the books. I'm going to go run those. Right. And you the know? numbers always work out. It is crazy to me out. how much it is crazy to me. And I keep telling this like statistics in numbers in final expense just work right yeah like when someone like nick or myself is telling you like hit that number it's because we know it to be true and it's like statistically like over the last like 20 years been true yeah it's not a new number no the the, the, you know how much the premium is and it's a little bit different for everybody like how much premium is how many leads you need to buy Blah, blah blah. It's all just one big equation, and if you can figure it out, and the equation is like free, it's out there. Yeah. If there's no there's no magic number that joining an IMO is going to make you understand that number. We can give it out to you for free here. Yeah. Buy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy twenty to twenty five direct mail leads a week. Yep. Okay. Call as many as possible schedule 15 appointments Yep. realistically sit down with 12 to 13 and close a little over half. Yeah. If you do that with an average, with an average premium dollar of about, I think it's 62 is, is the new, but it'll go, it'll it'll go up over time. You know, it's like $782, something like that you'll sell a little over $4,000 a week mm-hmm. with an average commission percent of, let's just say a hundred at a 75% advance, you'll be profitable. 2,500 to $3,000 every single week. Yeah. 
Um, Maybe a little more. Yeah. I mean, but it's just like, I'm, and I'm going to tell you, like, like there are very few people who can't live off of twenty five hundred dollars a week. If right? you can't, you have a spending problem. Right. Right. Like twenty five hundred dollars. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And most, like, yeah. It, but that's what I'm saying. You like, know, like, like that's yeah. like twenty five hundred dollar a week. Twenty five hundred dollars a week is actually doctor money. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, I until I married my wife i love my life that should cost a lot of money mm-hmm. um before yeah. i married my wife i could survive i'm no joke i could survive off of about 1200 dollars a month yeah and live comfortably i can still go get a bucket of popcorn go see the movies and all that stuff like yeah cars paid for you know all that insurance is everything i could survive off 1200 dollars a month yeah. you don't need to spend if you're managing we had chris on if you if they tell you that you need to go buy a nice car oh to yeah, make yourself right? broke like run I, I, I still hear people saying stuff like that like you know like the same thread that i've talked about about motivation there were several people that popped into that thread and said you know go buy a car with a 1500 dollars a month car payment you Why? Will, you and you, you'll be motivated and you probably will. I mean, you know, you nobody will, wants to have yeah. their car be repossessed, but, um, but that's, I mean, why? Like, you don't have to be stressed. It doesn't have to be a stressful job, right? Yeah. It's a job you have to work at. It's a job that you have to put the time and effort and energy into. And, and it it's requires hard work, but it doesn't have to be like crazy out of your mind stress. Yeah. And once you do it for like three years and the renewal start to build up, it becomes this like, dream yeah you know what i mean like when when the stuff that you were writing you know nine months ago starts hitting plus the renewals from the stuff that you wrote three years ago is also hitting at the same time plus your new commissions that you wrote from a week prior is hitting Absolutely. all in one time and you're getting checks for three thousand four thousand five thousand dollars at a time yeah it's crazy to go back it's like you i promise you Anybody that's watching this might be brand new. I promise you, it is so worth it to just stay in this business long term and get better. You're, you're going to be, if you're 25 or even 30 or even 40, you're going to be working in this business, or you should be, for the next 20 to 30 years. You're only going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And you're only going you to the worst. Money. You are the worst at this job today that you will ever be. Right? You will only, you will only ever improve. And you'll only ever make more money. And you'll only ever make more money. As long as you can continue to sell. Yeah. You'll only ever make more money. Yeah. That about, that about wraps up the video for me, man. Y'all should. Yeah. I think that's a good note to end on. I wish I I know that might be the end of the video, but somehow we should make that the start of the video. Like if Ryan makes that the intro, but give us a little cold open. Ryan, yeah. if you're paying attention, and because we're not going to remember to tell you to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're paying attention, clip this out. Put it at the beginning. Yeah, it's sick. Um, well, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. The insurance panel at gmail.com. Go like our Facebook page. We have a Twitter. We don't have a Twitter. I'm just kidding. I'm just rambling. Um, yeah, we should have we should have a Twitter though. I don't know why we? not. I don't have it. I I joined uh, I joined a insurance producers Reddit community the other day. It's mostly PNC guys, but really, I found a couple Reddits yeah. about uh, uh, about life insurance strategies, and it's mm. a bunch of people that are very hungry for sales. So, like, someone's like, mm. "Hey, I had this guy come by and like try to sell me this," and it's like people from the worst companies like oh you should get something that's like guaranteed like i can promise you i can get you coverage and it's going to be for your burial i'm like this person is asking about yeah. protecting their mortgage and it's like it's awful advice so i go on yeah. there uh it's kind of like the forums like people don't know who i am right so i get a like kind of like sideways troll but also give good advice for the people <laughs> that are asking the advice right um, yeah yeah reddit reddit's fun yeah, Reddit can be fun. Yeah, the one that I joined, it's actually it's a it's a private group that I stumbled across. Like you have to you have to kind of know that it exists and ask to be invited into it. Um, but it's still it's mostly PNC guys, so it's not actually all that interesting. I mean, it's I'm sure it's great for the PNC guys. It's just not all that interesting for me. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it was definitely subscribe. Click the bell. Yeah. Make sure you're like Dusty. 
not like Dusty and actually sign into your Google account on your phone so it actually sees it and so you don't get mad at me and say we're not uploading because we are. We're being consistent. You Every week. Consistent. <laughs> Watch the videos and like it, comment, subscribe. Thanks again, guys. Talk to y'all soon. See ya.